Welcome back to OCRMEI for the Mathematics B. Today we're doing chapter 9.1, Differential Equations Introduction. Differential equations, used to be called DE, was um, one of the core, well, one of the modules that you could take for your A level. And uh, the, that's the old spec anyway. Now it's compulsory and you need to know uh, basic DE, which is fine. Um, differential equations deal with changes. So uh, one of the most seen is rate. Oops, that's yellow. Uh, I keep a black pen. Uh, rate, which d um, essentially mean that you have something differentiated by uh, time. So as a change in time occurs, how does a variable, I don't know, uh, R changes? It can be any value, by the way. As long as it changes with respect to time, it is a rate. Also, uh, it would be very helpful if you can think in a kind of physics sense, a mechanical kind of equations sense. So if you do physics, great. If you don't, then, well, sucks to be you, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, you will have to learn a lot more. So what we call a, a displacement, uh, so if I have an object A, after a certain time, independent of its path, arrived at point B, it has a displacement of the shortest distance between these two points. So, uh, let's see, if the actual path turns out to be something like this, the displacement is the same as if you have a path that works sort of like this. So, displacement is a function uh, that is time independent and uh, path independent. So no matter what which path you take, uh, as long as you start and end at the same place, you have the same displacement. And displacement, spelled as follows, is denoted in mechanics as x. So the value x is now not an arbitrary value of variable, it is now a meaningful variable, which we call displacement. And what about velocity? So in mechanics we love talking about how fast things go, so we talk about velocity. And velocity turns out to be also uh, path independent. However, uh, the velocity, the velocity of a certain object at a certain point, depends on time and the path. So, it, according to um, well, in order to find the velocity the standard procedure was to find the rate of the change of the displacement denoted by this d by dt of x. In another notation which is a lot more ink efficient, you can write it as x dot. So the dot notation is used for rate and rate only. Remember we have, uh, I, I'm not sure if I taught this or not, but uh, another way of denoting a differential f of x can be f dash of x, so that would become a differential, the dash means a differential. However, in rate, although it is this uh, still holds true, but this one uh, will not tell you with what respect are you differentiating the function 
with with a dot we know that it is always time so that is one very important notation to note and we also have another uh, variable or value that we need to talk about which is the acceleration of the object which is path depend let's see is it um I mean, it is dependent on the velocity, so I guess it is kind of path dependent. Okay, so uh, on a certain point, say on this point, the acceleration would point towards this way, probably, because it has to curl back to the central line and decelerate backwards. So. Um, if you've done the old mechanics back, then it's going to be very straightforward. But if you haven't, then it's not. <clears throat> uh, so let's see. With that, uh, we know that something is happening with the acceleration, which depends on the path that comes in front of it. And what we can say is that the acceleration can be denoted as d by dt of x dot which means that it can also be denoted in a fancy way x dot dot as acceleration of course there are other expressions that is commonly used v is a very good uh, notation for velocity or sometimes they use a fancy new uh, but I don't, I don't personally use this Greek letter uh, unless it's something to do with, uh, I think, uh, viscosity or something. But anyway, let's stick with value phi. No one's gonna penalize you for using uh, different variables unless it doesn't look anywhere common. So if you use uh, g for velocity, then it's just basically confusing, isn't it? Uh, for acceleration, however, we have small a, which is, well, you, you see the drill. So, with that said, uh, there's one last thing that is very important uh, to know, just a mental note, which is how Newton's second law works. So, the Newton's second law is the, um, defined as well it's not defined as this but ooh, okay if you're a physicist you're gonna hate me uh, but if you're a mathematician it's fine the acceleration on Newton's second law is defined by f equals ma for a constant acceleration and with that uh, then everything works if you are not a mathematician, you are a physicist, then you are probably better off with P on del T. I think del P on del T, one of them. Uh, so P is the momentum. As far as I know, you do not need to know momentum in differential equations so ignore that uh, for all purposes uh, just remember you have the awesome equation of f equals ma and you should be able to power through all the differential equations with that said however I think we shall kind of break off here and try to digest actually before before I uh, stop acceleration uh, the exam at least the old DE exam used to love to trick people on using different expressions for acceleration and one of the expression is phi d phi by dx which looks a bit 
confusing and doesn't make sense but if you turn everything into differential form which means that phi is dx by dt then it turns out that they do cancel uh, dx cancels and you're left with d phi by dt which is acceleration so another form of acceleration to remember is d phi d phi by dx or if you can derive this on the spot by just rearranging algebra, go ahead, because remembering this equation is a bit stupid in my book. But yeah, basically that's all for simple differential equations for now. Uh, this is chapter 1 anyway, it's, uh, well, chapter 9.1 anyway. Um, there are a lot, literally a lot to cover. Uh, in terms of differential equations. We'll start talking about first order, then we'll slowly move over to second order and all the different solutions. To be honest, the most difficult bit is the uh, second order differential equations, which I'm gonna spend at least four video talking about. Um, other than that, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on my next one.